John. Play 52 pickup. You play the prankster's favorite card game, even though you are alone in the room, thus rendering it an especially foolish version of Solitaire. So stupid. Look at this mess. The peanut gallery over there sure is getting a kick out of it. You are allergic to their scorn. John, attempt to leave the house. You go back to the living room and contemplate checking the mailbox outside. You think perhaps you should exhaust all possibilities before plunging headlong into a dad encounter. Your television is currently airing a commercial. John, exit. You exit the house. John, check mail. Predictably, the mailbox is empty. You have already been scooped by your father. The streets are empty. Wind skims the voids, keeping in neighbors apart. As if grazing the hollow of a cut reed, or say, a plundered mailbox. A familiar note is produced. It's the one desolation plays to keep its instrument in tune. It is your 13th, bir 13th birthday, and as well with all 12 preceding it, something feels missing from your life. The game presently eluding you is only the latest sleight of hand in the repertoire of an unseen riddler. One to engender a sense, not of mirth, but of lack. His coarse schemes are those less of a prankster than a common pickpocket. His riddle is absence itself. It is a mystery dispersing altogether. Like the moon's faint reflection, with even one pebble of inquiry dropped in its black well. It is the most diabolical riddle of all. Riddle of all. Absence diminishes little passions and increases great ones. As wind extinguishes candles and fans the fire, Walt Whitman... Yes, you are certain Walt Whitman said that. 100% positive. You have a feeling it's going to be a long day. John, leave a surprise for the mailman. N no. John, see if your father left the mail in the car. The door is locked, and your dad has the car keys. You peer in through the driver's side window. You don't see any mail, but you do see a green package. There's also something underneath it that looks like a slip of paper. Could these items have come in the mail? You don't see anything else that's usually in the mail, like bills and coupons. Maybe your dad forgot to take this stuff forgot to take this stuff inside. John, spy in the kitchen. You try to get a gander through the kitchen window, but you can't see a whole lot. It seems your dad has been doing been doing so much baking the glass is steamed up. God, he is so weird. But you can see what's on the table just behind just beside the window. Looks like the mail is there. Including among it is a red package, some bills, your dad's PDA, and an envelope that appears to be suspiciously labeled with the Suburb logo. Could it be? Unfortunately, the window is locked. John, go back into the kitchen. You have no other choices. You are going in. Clever disguise, it's time to work your, mu your magic. John, enter. Your dad sees right through your costume. 
You don't know what you were thinking with this foolish ruse. You unequip the clever disguise. Your dad wields a dreaded artifact of confection. He stands between you and the mail. There is only one way to settle this. Strife! Agree! Auto pastry. I'm going to abjure. John, retrieve the package and flee to your room. You cannot abscond. The pesky guardian is blocking your path. You'll need to engineer some sort of distraction. And now, he brandishes yet another artifact of confection. The man is ruthless. You'd better brace for impact in the most comedically striking fashion possible. John, equip disguise, equip disguise for defense. The beagle... Agus absorbs the brunt of the treat. Looks like Dad will enjoy the prankster's gambit on that exchange, as is usually the case. John, capture log pie tin. You take the pie tin and unequip the beagle puss. Everything in your Silidex is pushed back a card. The smoke pellets are ejected from the deck. Yes, this could be just a distraction you were... Nothing happens. What a huge letdown. John, take the cake. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. Oscar Wilde. Wise words by a man who likely could, could resist everything but temptation. The cake forces Colonel Sassaker's text out of your Silidex. Sassaker, you beautiful bastard. Now's your chance. John, abscond. Now that Dad is busy placating the smoke detector, you can safely sneak away. John, take PDA. You snag your Dad's PDA. Maybe later, you'll switch the background image to something hilarious as a prank. Besides, it may come in handy later. Your spare capture log card is forced out of the Silidex and consequently integrated with the deck. You now have five cards to work with. John, take package. This red package is addressed to you. John, take envelope. You got the suburb beta. John, exit kitchen. John, get cake on couch. You capture log the cake on the couch, expelling the pie tin from the bottom card. John, combine the cakes to make a double decker cake. You then merge the two car two cakes across all five cards. Everything in your Silidex is smushed between the cakes. Why don't you think these things through first? John, retreat upstairs. You pause at the juncture and head down the hall. You are going to need something to clean up the mess you are about to make by dissecting this cake. To the left is the bathroom. To the right is your dad's room. It is locked and you are forbidden from ever entering. He has secrets. John, go to bathroom and grab a towel. You enter the bathroom. You can see your backyard from the window. The jewel in its crown is the swing set, which has provided you with years of joy. There's also a spring-mounted pogo ride, which has been responsible 
for more than one painful injury and has provided you with years of lament. On the sink is your dad's razor. On the rack to the side is a fresh towel. John, remove PDA, envelope, and package from cake. You take the razor and use it to perform surgery on the cake. You take a towel and clean off the extracted goods. John, retrieve your items. The items force the manhandled cake into the toilet. And just like that, your Silinex is full again. God, this thing is annoying. John, go to bedroom. John, admire Failure to Launch poster. You're not usually into chick flicks, but Matthew McCogany's cool charisma could savage any heap of smoldering wreckage. This is your McCogany wall. A casual shrine to an amazing actor. The film above that one is a lot better, you think. Can you see her? I want you to picture that little girl. Chokes up. Now imagine she's white. You got us, Matthew. Your smooth talking exposed our latent racism. Damn, you are good. John, check pester chum. Oh my. Happy birthday, John! Hello! Okay, I'll talk to you later! Hey, uh, GG is looking for you. Why are you even so popular all of a sudden? Is today some sort of special occasion or something? Did you do something to curry flavor with, la with ladies? Favor with ladies? Did you break your leg on a puppy or some shit? Dude, what are you doing? Uh, I discovered a comet that is going to destroy the Earth, and it was named after me. Now I am famous, and everyone wants to talk to me a lot. N no, stop. Just, just no. Don't talk about your awful, stupid movies or make references to them. Your gross man-bro crush on Matt McConaughey is an unsavory thing to behold. Uh, McConaughey. Uh, sounds like a dumb noise a horse would make. I.E. dumb. Equally dumb are all those pictures of that clown you've got hanging up. Uh, those are my dad's. I was talking about Nick Cage. Oh, what? No, man. Cage is sweet. So sweet. Haha, <laughs> so lame. You don't even like him ironically or anything. This is like, for real, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I do things ironically sometimes. What about what I sent you for, for your birthday? No, those are awesome. What? No, they're stupid, which was the joke. The ironic joke. Get it? Wait. You're actually wearing them, aren't you? I'm wearing them ironically because they're awesome. The fact that they're ironic makes them awesome and vice versa. Are you taking notes on how to be cool? Jesus, get a fucking pen. You do realize they touch Stiller's weird sort of gaunt face at some point. Ew, yeah. Oh well. Anyway, speaking of which... Did you get the mail? Yeah. Uh, did there happen to be a package there? Yeah, there's a big red one. should probably open it. I would, but it's trapped under the suburb beta, so I will probably open it after I install the beta. Oh man, the beta came. Yeah, wanna play it? <laughs> no way. Why not? It sounds so hells of boring. Just get TT to play it. She is all about that. You know, where'd she go? Her internet is blinking in and out, I guess. Probably be back online soon. Oh, and Christ in a sidecar, are you still using the stack modus? Seriously, dude, you need to bone up on your data structure. That shit is just ridiculous. Okay, I will. John, open browser and go to mspaintadventures.com.
You decide to space out on the computer for a while before doing anything important. You open the Typhus web browser and direct it to what is indisputably the most amazing website ever created. Uh, the new adventure is okay, but you're not sure if you like it as much as the last one. John, install the Suburb Beta. You decide it's time for less Meta and more Beta. You insert the CD and install the Suburb Beta. What the fuck is this? John, bone up on data structures. You go to your closet, where you keep a lot of clothes and an array of handy computer programming books. John, read data structures book. Data structures for assholes. Your ignorance just made me throw up a little. Get a clue, you complete, you computer illiterate piece of shit. Free fetch modus and back. You're not sure you really want to dig into this huge tome. It looks really boring and kind of ornery. Maybe you'll just check out the free modus instead. John, get free fetch modus. Fetch modus, first in, first out, cue. <clears throat> you turn to the back inside cover, where a free fetch modus is included in a plastic sleeve. This one is dictated by the logic of a cue data structure operating on a first in, first out method, rather than a first in, last out method of a stack. John, apply fetch modus to Silidex. Items capture log in your Silidex are no, long, are no longer immediately accessible. You can only use the item on the bottom card and must wait for the items on the upper card to be pushed back to it. For instance, the red package is now inaccessible. You can only use the razor at the moment. This modus doesn't strike you as a significant upgrade to your previous one. In fact, it almost seems more inconvenient. You figure you might as well give it a chance, though. John, switch back to stack modus. You suddenly wonder if this is even possible. You don't even remember if you ever had a physical card for the stack modus. You find this to be a little abstract and you'd prefer not to think about it too much. John, put down razor. Put it down. You're not quite sure you understand. John, pick up two items. You capture log one of the cakes. You finally found a use for all these loitering pastries. Dead weight. John, get other cake. The second cake causes the razor to launch out in front of your Silidex. Oh, good lord, that beautiful face. You wish the razor would have failed to launch. John, get more stuff. You open your magic chest and capture log one of your favorite books of all time, Wise Guy by Mike Caveney. There goes the fresh towel. John, might as well grab those cuffs. You take the trick handcuffs, expelling the PDA like a bullet. Oh god damn it. John, open up that package. To EB from TG. You examine the package. It is from one of your internet chums. It's bound in packing tape, though. You'll need something sharp to open it. Ah, of course, the razor. 
It's all so simple. You wonder why you didn't John get Razor. <laughs> John, pick up package again. Let's take this from the top. John, capture log glass shards. You take three glass shards in quick succession and duck for cover. Your Silidex rains devastation on your room from above. And now that your cards are packed with glass, you probably don't want to do that again anytime soon. should probably go get that stuff before you forget. John, use the razor on the red package. You open the package. There's something suspicious inside. Something suspiciously dirty and smelly. It is a stuffed bunny, much like the one held hostage briefly by Malkovich's Cyrus the Virus, while taunting hard luck protagonist Cameron Poe and strikingly similar to the one scooped up from the soot of a burning Vegas strip by Cage's Poe and offered to his daughter, a gesture symbolic of a tattered exterior surrounding a heart of gold. Poe wasn't much to look at, but he was a good man. But no, it is not merely like that bunny. According to this note of authenticity, it is the very same bunny. This is so awesome. Check status of suburb beta. Looks like your computer is trying to get your attention. John, look at monitor. John, check pester chum window. Oh wait, suburb client is running. A suburb host is attempting to connect with you. Client has established connection with host. Press enter when ready. Looks like you managed to retrieve the beta. Excellent. I'm going to try to connect. Uh, well, okay, but I just got the most awesome present. The rabbit? So sweet! I've heard tales of this wretched creature often. Its uh, homerific legend is practically enschooned in the fold of my personal mythology by now. <laughs> what? Why don't we focus on the matter at hand? Oh, the game. Okay. I don't really know how this works. What am I even looking at here? You are running the client application. I am running the server, so I am the host user. I've established a connection with you. This is sufficient for us to play the game. Oh, okay then. Why don't we get started? John, press enter.